All right, I've got lots of training in the Rank Like a Boss training system and YouTube videos and blog posts and all kinds of things on how to optimize a blog post. So I wanna do this overview today so that you can really understand how I go about doing the video and breaking up the transcript and just giving you some of those concepts and then you can dive deeper into the how to optimize a blog post for SEO um, on my series as well. All right, so in this case, we've already ordered our transcription from rev.com and I'm gonna go ahead now and download it. So I went into my orders, I found my order and then you're gonna be able to see this, download, customize, view and edit, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and download mine. I'm gonna download it to my desktop. What should I be doing? And I'm gonna go in here and grab it. It's right, in my case, it's right at the bottom here, still open, still worth downloaded. And here's my transcript, okay? Now we're gonna come back to that in just a second. Next, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go over to my website that I'm gonna post this um, blog on, okay? I'm using a different transcript because my other one, uh, our other example we have been using all day isn't done being transcribed yet and I wanna keep going. So I will use another one, but the same concepts absolutely 100% apply, okay? So here's an example of my blog, blog site. Obviously I do a lot with video. These are all video blogs. Let's take a look at a finished product. Um, actually, I'm going to show you this one. Hold on. Um, I'm going to show you the one I did that's a longer one. Let me go to read the blog. This is one of my favorite ones. Oh, there it is. Build to expand. That's the one I want as far as using it as an example because of the length of it. It's so meaty. So this transcript was about 8,000 words long. And it's a one-hour video. This was a class that Chris Suarez from Oregon did and allowed me to video and do a transcript and put it on my blog, which is awesome. So here's the, here's the idea of the finished product. We're going to have a title. We're going to SEO the title, make sure we know what keywords we want to use. We're going to do an intro. We're going to add the video. We're going to embed the video. I'll show you a couple ways to do that. We're going to create an offer. Always underneath your video have an offer here or a button, some sort of call to action that goes with your video. So sign up for all webinars, uh, click here to view the next video in this series. Uh, normally I want this to be something they would they potentially would register for, would be great. Um, search all homes on the MLS now, you know, that type of thing. If they click here, you can see in my case, they're gonna go to a, um, a, pay, a landing page that allows them to sign up for all webinars, okay? Um, so play with these buttons and I'm gonna show you how we create these. Then I, I love to have like a quote, something that is going to compel them to, to, to go further, okay? Obviously the main thing on this page is the video. Next, we're gonna have a table of contents. As long as we've done our transcript, um, as long as our transcript was meaty enough to have a table of contents, we're gonna have a table of contents. If your transcript is 300 words long because it was a super short video, you may not have a table of contents because it's, it's not gonna be so long that it matters, okay? In my case, it does. And what happens is whenever the, if somebody wants to skip down, and this is really just a transcript, but I made it look more like a blog. If they wanted to skip down to models, they could click that and they'll shoot down the page to that portion. You know, potentially somebody wants to watch the video, uh, wants to read the blog instead of video, watch the video. So they've got both options here. All right. Or maybe they watched the video, but they wanted to they wanted to hear what he said on one particular part. It's kind of like taking notes. So the transcript literally starts off with him saying, my name is Chris Suarez and I've been invited to come out and really talk. OK, so these are his actual words that were provided to me in a transcript. And then I added his picture and his contact info um, that could be cleaned up a little bit. But I added his contact info here so that um, he gets some credit since I used his material. He gave me permission to use his material video of the class, all right? So then again, all of these little quotes here, these kind of little things that, that come out in orange like that or in colors, they break up this chunky, heavy text that happens on a website. And on mobile especially, if I scroll this down, you can start seeing if somebody's reading all that text, they're gonna get bored really quickly. So you need things that break it up, that, that help their eyes handle the material better. And those are going to be things like these orange and yellows and buttons and other videos and things like that. Okay. So these are really, really important for the user experience. 
And if you provide a great user experience, you're much more likely to rank on the search engines as well because Google wants to return the best experience for its customers. That's how it stays the search engine of choice. And so it's important. It's also going to increase page views and dwell time, you know, how long somebody spends on your website, um, how many actions they take, and the, the potential of them, of them actually becoming a lead, period. So this is really important, okay? All right, so that's kind of the summary. Let me scroll down here a little bit more so you can see what else. We're putting in these little line breaks here. These also um, help the eyes, and that person can now click on go to top, and they shoot right back up to the top. So if they're bored or they want to see the menu, we're giving them outs in between all this chunky text here, right? And then towards the bottom, I have related articles. These would be things related to the blog post. This is also good for SEO to be linking to other articles on your um, website. It's also a positive for the consumer that they may want something else. And I measure all this on my heat map so I know what works and doesn't work because I measure it. And I look at where they click and scroll and where they don't. So these kind of things are, are really cool and beneficial. They're not just cool. They're beneficial. All right. So this is what we're going to do today. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to create a new post. All right. And you're going to title the post based on whatever your um, YouTube video is. Okay. Um, this is going to be too long for those of you that are using Yoast SEO, where it's going to measure your search engine title. It's going to have too many characters. I'm going to show you where we can change that. Okay. I'm going to change this URL permalink on WordPress. It automatically defaults and creates a permalink URL structure based on your title. And it's way too long. So I'm going to change that to video tutorial. I'm just going to leave it at that video tutorial. Okay. Now I need an intro. Oh, that's right. I forgot we're using a different example. I'm sorry. Let me go grab the correct one here. We are going to use this one from the transcript. What should I be doing with my real estate website? Let's use that one. Okay. Well, let me find it. Hold on. All right. Here it is. What to do with my real estate website. Let me click that. All right. Um, here it is. And you can use emojis in your titles for your WordPress too, if you want to. But I am not going to in this case. Um, I'm also going to take that out. That was really only for YouTube. And I'm going to change this to, um, what should I be doing with my real estate agent website? Building real estate agent website. Building building a real estate agent website. I think I'm gonna go with that. I have the reason I'm pausing is because I have another page on my website already that's about real estate agent websites, and I don't want to confuse Google. So I'm just thinking strategically here for a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. You know, I'm going to change this to how should I build a, no, I already have how to build a real estate website. I may have to think about this one. Um, I know what I'm going to do. Creating content for your, creating content. Um, real estate agent website content. What should I be doing there? Now, this is the keyword I want right here. Real estate website content. Real estate agent website content. That's what I want. Okay. You really don't want to be optimizing multiple pages for the same keyword. So I have to strategically think about where to go with my content. That's what I just did. I've got lots of training on that type of stuff as well. All right. So now we need our intro. So let me open this. Um, document. All right. I'm going to go ahead and paste the whole thing in there all the way down to where they asked me to review their work. We don't want, oh, they don't have that on here. Okay. Oh, that was at the top. Okay. I'm going to go and paste that in there. So pay, I'm pasting the whole thing in there. Okay. 
Now take a look down here. This particular video, 7,617 words. And it was a, how long was that video? 46 minutes. So in a 46 minute video, I covered, I talked almost 8,000 words or 7,500 words. If that gives you any kind of a, an idea, um, long form content pages that are, you know, blog posts that are super in depth tend to rank better. I love when I can get 5,000 plus words in, on a page. Okay. All right. Now, so this is our intro is this first part here and we're going to go ahead right now and, uh, check. We're going to, we're going to do a couple of things. First thing is I use the Grammarly app, G R A M M A R L Y Grammarly. And let me see, do I have a link to Grammarly? Go to lauriestools.com and look at Grammarly. I do have a link for Grammarly. So if you want to try Grammarly, go over to Lori, lauriestools.com and click on the Grammarly link. And what Grammarly does, it's, it does slow down as you're loading a little bit. It does cause you a little bit of lag time here. But what Grammarly does, it spell checks and grammar checks and such. So you can see here, my transcriber made a typo right here, didn't he? Let me do a quick skim and see if it looks like there's a bunch of typos. So all of those red underlines are not necessarily typos. They might be suggestions, remove a comma, add a comma, but it does not look like he has a bunch of spelling errors. Okay, so I rate the, the transcriber based on the quality of the work that they give me. So if they've got a bunch of spelling errors, I'm gonna have issues, but it, I don't think they do. All right, so here's what I do. I go through that first paragraph. First paragraph is imperative that you have um, internal links like call to action in here. Hello everyone, it's Lori Ballen and today we're rolling into a new series playlist here called What Should I Be Doing With My Real Estate Agent Website? So guess what I'm going to do right here? Anybody know where I'm going to link? Put a link right here. I'm going to be putting it on my series playlist that goes to my YouTube channel. Why would I do that? And I'm going to have it open in a new window so they don't lose their spot. Because I'm saying this is the series playlist. I want them to be able to access the series playlist besides just on the blog. And if they go over to YouTube and subscribe and click the little bell and I get more traction, it's better for my rankings. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to go over to YouTube right now. And I'm going to look at my playlist. And I'm going to grab that link to the playlist I have that I started creating that I'm talking about on this video. And it's right here. What should I be doing with my real estate agent website? So I am going to click there and I'm going to share. I think it's that link. Let me double check. I'm going to copy that. This should open the playlist. Oh, play all. Maybe that'll do it. I wanted to share the whole playlist. Hold on. things because I think they're true. I have the edit evidence. Hold on. I'm just forgetting something stupid simple here. Where is the share button? Edit? Is it in the edit? It is in the edit. That's so funny. They should have that on the front side. Okay. It's crazy. So here's the playlist. And then I'm going to go back over to my blog post and I'm going to highlight where I want to put the link which by the way is very important how you, how you link your anchor text um, does make a difference in the SEO link equity that you receive on the, on the receiving page. But in this case, it's just YouTube. It's okay. So we're going to click that little thing here and to get this to open in a new window. I'm on WordPress to get it to open a new window. I'm going to click this little gadget here and I'm going to click open in a new tab and click update. Okay. Now I'll get rid of little words like all right and um, or anything like that, that I see in here that, you know, I want this to look more like a blog post than a transcript. So hello everyone. It's Lori Ballin. For those of you that are new to me, I own a real estate business here in Las Vegas, Nevada called Lori Ballin team. Okay. Now most people would just automatically highlight Lori Ballin team and send that to my website. The better way, more strategic way is to highlight a set of keywords that I want that site's rank for. So in this particular case, I own a real estate business. I'm going to get rid of the word here. I own a real estate business in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm going to go ahead and click on my link and I'm going to put the link to my real estate website. Okay. 
And we serve Las Vegas, Henderson, and North Las Vegas. Okay, now, um, I'm going to add something here. Today, I'm going to, well, let me see if I already covered this. I probably already did. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. Today, I want to talk about what you should be doing with your real estate agent website. Okay, I am going to cut this out and put that at the top because I want that to be part of my intro before I get all long-winded here. Remember, this top part is so important because it's what makes them want to watch the video or go down further onto the blog series, onto your um, blog. Today, I want to talk to you about what you should be doing with your real estate agent website. Now here, I've got another page that ranks for real estate agent website, and so I'm going to highlight that and it'll search WordPress for that article and um, real estate agent website and it'll make its suggestions and I know which one it is. It's the best real estate agent websites for 2018. Click the arrow. All right. Um, if I want that to open in a new window, click the pencil, click the wheel, open in a new tab. Okay. I'm going to do an overview in this video and then I'm going to break, break, them down for you in this series into individual components so you can get more of the real deal application. Now that's important, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to Command B makes it bold. Command I puts it in italics. Okay. Uh, and how, how to, I'm going to put in quotes, like how to in those videos. Guys, this part. This, this adding the transcript, this creating the blog post is so important that you have a system process method to how you create that blog post. Because if you just smack it on the page and you don't do these optimization things, everything goes down. The odds that you'll capture a lead, the odds that you'll rank on the search engines, the odds that anybody will stay on the page, you know, everything goes down. So if you're going to be doing this, you spent the money, you spent the time, you spent the energy, you might as well have a process for how this page is optimized. So for me, it's very, very, it's very, very much a process. Okay. Literal checklist. Did I do the title? Did I do the intro? You know, did I uh, break up the transcript, add my short codes and internal links? Did I add my image? Did I go down to Yoast? You're going to see all that now. So it's very much a process. Okay. And I would say this is all pretty easy as far as it's not a super creative process once you know what you know the process. So you could give this to a virtual assistant, um, somebody out of the country or an intern or, um, you know, your high school kid at home that wants to earn some extra money. If they can follow the process, they can do this. The biggest challenge for you will be them knowing where to put these internal links. If they don't know the website or don't kind of have a map, they're going to get stuck there because they don't know what other content you've created. So that's the one thing you might have to go back in and do, or you might have to give them some sort of a map that says, here's my top 20 pages on my website that rank on the search engines. Make sure if you say any of these 20 words that you link to these pages, because that link equity is important for helping that other page rank as well. And so that the customer has somewhere else to click. So you're going to have to think about that one piece. Okay. All right. So that's perfect. That's all I need for my intro up top. Okay. Now, let me show you something right out of the bat, um, right off the bat, <laughs> right out of the gate, right off the bat. Um, one, there's going to be a section for a featured rich snippet and for a meta description if you're following my teachings. Okay, I don't cover all that in this video series, but if you're a rank like a boss customer and you're learning along with me and taking all my trainings, you are, you are learning about meta descriptions and rich snippets. Okay. Well, a meta description is what shows up on the search engines over here. When somebody types something in, like homes for sale in Orlando, they're, they're going to glance really quick. And this description here is fed by your meta description. So it's really important what you're using here and that you're utilizing all the space that you can. Well, how we do that with uh, my teachings is we use Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. It's a plugin for WordPress. And what we do is we take a, um, a description and a call to action and we make that our meta description. So here where it says, today I want to talk to you about what you should be doing with your real estate agent website. I'm going to do an overview in this video, blah, blah, blah. This is perfect for a meta description. 
So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go down to where my Yoast and my um, featured snippets are. I really should move those to the top. And I'm going to go down to here, configure rich snippet. If you don't have this yet, you're not at this level, don't worry about it. But if you're following my trainings and you're trying to get featured rich snippets and you're using um, schema markup, you want to do this real quick. So configure rich snippet. I'm going to scroll down. What is this page about? Well, I could choose video and mark it up as a video or an article. Really either one applies, okay? But not both. So in this case, I'm going to do article and article image. I'm going to upload what you should do with the real estate website. Okay. So I'm, uh, let's see if I've made that thumbnail yet. Upload. Um, bup, bup, bup. I don't think I uploaded it yet. Hold on. Upload files, select files, thumbnails. I don't think I made it yet. Let me see. Oh, good. I did. Let me show you how to do this. It's so cool. So if I go over to what should I be doing with my real estate agent website, I need to go to that particular video and I go to edit the video. If I've already made the thumbnail and I, for some reason, can't find it on my computer, just hover over the custom thumbnail right here and click download image. And then I'm going to right click save image as what should I be doing with my real estate agent website. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to save that as a thumbnail. It says I already did it. Did I put it in the thumbnail folder? Oh, well, it says it's there already, but I'll go ahead and replace it. Let me go back. How am I missing it? Select files, thumbnails. Okay, well, there it is this time. We'll just go with that. What should I be doing with my real estate agent website? And um, insert it into post. Normally, I would do my um, optimize the image right here for SEO, but I've got something funny on my uh, WordPress where it's not showing it up on the first first round. So let me show you. Let me go and insert post, and then we're going to go in and edit it. Let me click on it again. Oh, can't do it from there. I'm going to do it from here instead. Set featured image. There's my image. I want to edit it. There we go. Okay, there it is. So you want to have this alt text right here. This is where you describe what's in the image for somebody that would be visually impaired. Okay, so they're going to have a, a screen reader and it hovers over it and tells them what this image is about. That is positive for that customer and it's also a positive signal to the search engines, helps your images rank. So I'm going to title this um, laptop computer is on a coffee table with a vase of flowers, coffee mug with Ballon Brands logo, and a pad and pen. Um, words on the screen say what should, okay, words on the screen spell out, should be letters on the screen. Okay, hold on. Let me get this right. Letters on the screen spell out the words, what should I be doing with my real estate agent's website? Okay, set featured image. Okay, oh, let me go back down to our meta description. Sorry, I got off. Okay, article name, what should I be doing with my real estate agent website. I know we changed the name a minute ago. That's okay. We'll see. This doesn't have to be identical. Okay, I'm going to paste my short description. They really only want 30 words here. So I'm going to change this. Um, today I want to talk about what you should be doing with your real estate agent website, um, including creating uploading and uh, creating, uploading, optimizing, and repurposing video content. Perfect. Author is Lori Ballin. Publisher is Ballin Brands. My publisher logo is right here. Again, what I'm doing right now, if you're not at the point where you're doing schema markup, don't worry about that, okay? But for those of you that are, that's where you want to put that. Excerpt, 
I would put something really short right here. This is going to be used if you have automation set up, like you have Zapier set up, where if I post a, bl a blog post to WordPress, then tweet it, and it's using the excerpt instead of the meta description so that your character count will fit in there. This is where that goes. There's other re there's other things that use your excerpt, So, but this should be really short. Uh, put it this way. It should be tweet length, okay? No longer than a tweet length. All right, now. Let's look down here, see my automatic title from the top fed down here. Well, it's cutting off, we don't want that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna manually change this one. Real estate agent website content. And I'm gonna change this from video to blog for SEO and social, does that fit? Yes, beautiful, okay. And then um, as, as long as my keyword I'm optimizing for, which is right here, real estate agent website content is in that title, we're good to go, okay? I also suggest putting it in the, in the meta description if that fits. So I'm gonna change this here. Today I wanna talk about real estate agent website content. Okay, and now make sure it's green and then you know that you've got the right number of characters. And then here's for your focus keyword if you wanna use Yoast to optimize and follow the checklist, which a lot of my coaching clients like to follow that. I'm gonna put in here real estate agent website content. And now it'll tell me how good my page is for SEO as I go along, okay? Um, and I mine almost always turns green pretty quickly. So then um, I'm gonna also make sure this is in the right category because this is a blog and this is very important. I wanna make sure this is in, what are we doing here? Real estate agent website. So I'm gonna put this in my real estate website category, okay? When you're building a website, you, and you're especially if you're using WordPress categories, you only wanna create a category if you're gonna have a whole bunch of, of pages of content or blog posts that go in that category. That's when you create a category. Otherwise, just keep everything in a blog and just call it blog and you don't have to worry about it. In my case, I have a lot of different categories and so they're there for a reason, very specific, okay? All right, so we've done kind of all of our um, nuts and bolts there. Let's go back to our editing. Now we're gonna put in our video. So right here, we're gonna put return and there's a couple ways to do this. You can go to your video and um, let's go, let's look at it in, um, look at it in a regular view like somebody else would be watching it. So I'm gonna take this YouTube video right here and I'm gonna paste it right here so we can look at it just like a customer would. Okay, now down here, you can click share. When you click share, click embed and now choose your options here. Show suggested videos, no, because they might show somebody else's. Show player controls, yes. Show video title and player actions. I don't really care to do that, okay? Then you take this iframe right here, go back over to your website, hit the text, and paste it wherever you want the video. Now don't panic. If you pasted it in the wrong spot, watch this. Go back to your visual editor and you're gonna be able to see the video. See that? You can now cop, cut and paste that anywhere you want it. So don't worry if you got it in the wrong spot, it's no big deal. Just go back and paste it wherever you want it. Okay, now let's just say your width is wrong and your, your theme is not adjusting your video for you. Click on the text tab and go back over to where the video is. And you see here where it says width, you can actually change this um, quotes or no quotes? Hold on, I forget. 100%. I set my defaults up so I don't have to do it this way and I'm, I'm gonna show you those in a second. Let me go back to visual and see if that works. I can't remember quotes or no quotes. Um, let me click preview and see if this is the right size now. Yep, it did it right. Okay, so what I did here, let me show you again. Go back over to text find your iframe so the, your video is where it says iframe it has these little angle brackets right here okay just go over to where it says width and inside those quotes type in 100 percent and then it will be the actual width of your website okay that's a that's a good way to do it now here's how i do it i'm going to get rid of this 
for this particular theme, there's different, I use, I use different themes for different things. Um, I'm going to use short codes. So I have a plugin for my WordPress website called Short Codes Ultimate. And I love Short Codes Ultimate for optimizing a blog post. So once I've added that plugin, and if you go look up my video, I have a video on how to use Short Codes Ultimate and how to install it. I have a video on how to add plugins, all kinds of, all kinds of videos. Right here, we're going to go to Insert Short Code. And I'm going to go down to this YouTube Advanced. Now, what I love about YouTube Advanced is I've already preset all of my favorite standards, how wide it's going to be, the height, the buttons, what I want it to do or not do. Do I want it to autoplay? Do I want it to loop? You can do all of that in here, which is really cool. So all I have to do is go back over to my video and all I need is that short, um, the regular URL. So I'm going to click share and I'm just going to grab the YouTube link right here. Go back over to my website and I'm going to paste it in that URL section right there. Okay. Then I'm going to head down because I don't need to do anything else in my case because I've already preset all this. And I'm going to click live preview to make sure that I have the right video there because sometimes it'll load the old one. And then I can click insert short code. So once you have this set up, it is super fast. Oh, geez. Where did my short code go? Hold on. Did it not put it in there? Let me see. Sometimes it puts it in there and for some bizarre reason, it's in the wrong spot. All right. So some, I did something wrong just now. Hold on. I was rushing. Insert short code. YouTube advanced. Paste the URL. Scroll down for live preview. Insert short code. What is happening? <laughs> Hold on. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Every now and then this happens with this short code. I didn't build it, but it does happen. Let me go in and see if it's, it's not putting it anywhere, is it? That is so weird. Usually it puts it, it's just in the wrong spot and I have to look for it. But no, it's not there. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Whenever this glitch, whenever short codes ultimate glitches, I go to save draft. So that'll kind of do a, a reset on the content here. And then we're going to try this again. Click here, insert short code, YouTube advanced. Come on, baby, work for me. Live preview, insert short code. There it is. That's really, whenever it glitches like that, I just have to do save draft and then it'll come back. Strange, but that happens. Okay. So now let's go to preview so you can see what it is that you've done so far. We're already well on our way here now. These are the, these are the big chunky pieces. It's already looking beautiful. Okay. Now let's go back over to our blog post here. Now we're going to put in our call to action. This is our button. Okay. Some sort of call to action of what, what do we want this page to do? If, if somebody visits this web page, how are we encouraging either an extra action of some sort, like a, a viewing another page or going to a landing page, or how do we get them to register for something if that's your goal? So go up here to insert short code again, and we're going to go to button. Okay. And there's my button. And once again, I've already saved a whole bunch of presets in here. So if I go down here to the right hand side and look at presets, I've already set up calls to action that I use all the time. So you're able to go in here and save this. Just go in and look at my training on, on how to do that. Okay. So in this case, I've already done all of that. So what I want now is I want my instant webinars on this page. I want people to sign up for my instant webinars. So I'm going to click that. It could be to get to have them take a trial of an of affiliate product. It can be, um, if it's my real estate website, it's going to be to search IDX homes or to get a home value. Okay. Um, but if you subscribe to this blog, whatever you want, put it right underneath the video, right up top. Okay. Now let's preview this again so I can show you what it looks like. See there, there's your button. You see what I mean about this as a system and a process. And what happens is your blog starts to look really clean and structured and people get used to what it looks like. It's going to be a positive 
um, experience for them. And it looks killer on mobile. Let me scroll this down here. See, watch this on mobile. Okay. That intro is a little long. That's why I'm pausing. I normally like it just to be this section, not a double section. So, you know what I'm going to do? See, this is instinctive. This is the piece right here while you're watching live that your virtual assistant probably won't have instinct is this instinct. Okay. That's the only drawback. I have a creative instinct and I have an instinct based on my own experience. Um, so one creative instinct, I'm a writer. I'm a, I, I think creatively automatically and two experiential instinct is I know my SEO. I know the quality user experience based on my heat maps and what I've seen. So I know when something needs to be changed. Well, my gut, I can tell right now, this is too long. I'm going to take that. And guess what? I didn't know that. until I looked at how it's going to look on mobile, right? Because you can't be designing for desktop. You have to be designing for mobile yet. We build on a desktop still. So you're not, so you're previewing it in a desktop. You have to stop and look at it. Let me give you an example. Look at this up here on a desktop above the fold. Before I scroll, I can see two lines of content and I can start to see that video. Well, I would automatically by nature start to scroll up. So this is clean, nice. I'm happy with it. But if you take this and scroll it down, shrink this down to what it'll look like on mobile. Now look only above the fold is the title, these little breadcrumbs and that top portion. If that top portion is not enough, which I don't like it because it's actually talking about me not what's in it for them. So I'm, I, you know, it's what I talked about on the video, but I don't like it as much on a mobile blog post. I really want it to start off here so that they know what they're going to get by scrolling down. And then I'm going to move that paragraph. Okay. So above the fold, I'd rather them see this with a play button, more call to action. I'm going to, it's more likely I'll get to scroll. Okay. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to paste that down at the bottom where the transcript starts. So I'm still going to use it. I just don't like where it was at. I think that's going to kill my user experience. I want, I, it's going to kill that scroll. I'm afraid I'll have more bounces if they don't, this one's perfect. Tells them what they're going to get out of it. Okay. So you can get more of the real deal application and how to there's their benefit, right? It's not all about me. All right. Much, much better. Let's look at it now. I do a lot of this, by the way, preview, 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 edit, preview. That's the creative process that not everybody's going to understand. So then you, but that, that comes with your skill set. That comes with later on. Okay. All right. So here's their, here it is now. They've got the better intro and they can see a peekaboo of the video. I'm much happier with that. Much happier with that. All right. So keep those intros short. Keep the first part short before you put your video in there. Really keep it short and, and, Make sure they understand what they're going to get out of taking, spending the time today on this content. Okay. Then you got your video, then you've got your button and now we're going into some optimization. And I think I'm going to stop this video here and then do, um, finish up our, how to optimize for SEO, uh, and a quality user experience on the next video.